an MLB record has been broken for the first time since 1900, and it's probably by a player that you have never heard of because until he did this, it's not a player that I had ever heard of. Thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Adam, and if you enjoy sports cards, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button for more videos with sports card content and analysis. It is one of the best times of the year for sports, the beginning of the season, which means it is time to overreact, which is something that the sports card market and the hobby loves to do. So my Red Sox, I don't think they've won a game yet, and they may never win a game this whole season, and obviously that's an overreaction, but the team does not look good. And the purpose of this video is not to talk about my stinky Red Sox. It's to talk about Yerman Mercedes, who now, you know, he's cooled off a little bit, but he broke a record. He started the season with eight consecutive hits. That was the first time that has happened since 1900. And the weird thing about him is that he... So I guess he came out of nowhere because typically what you'll see with players in the MLB is they're going to have like a bunch of cards. Like Tops is very, I don't want to say liberal when it comes to giving players cards, but like he doesn't have any cards or he has like a few, but so he has like a top series one autograph. And then he has some tops now cards, which if you are looking for the, the first one, uh, essentially, that one is going to be his first, like, official non-autographed card. Because he for some reason, he was in top Series 1 with an autograph, but he didn't have a regular base card, which I thought was kind of odd. So, technically, his first base card is going to be a Topps Now card, which was available. You could have bought, like, for all the Topps Now, it's print-on-demand. So, if the hobby does what I think they do, most of the time they overreact. So I'm assuming this is going to be one of the higher print run cards, maybe in Topps Now history. I don't know. You know, who, who really knows? But then there's another Topps Now card where he, in the second game, because in the first game, he went five for five, I believe. And then in the second game, I think he went four for five. But he started, or I don't remember exactly what the statistics were there, but he started out with the season with eight consecutive hits, which is, like I said, pretty wild. And the hobby has overreacted. And his car, his top series one autograph went from $10 to $200, which I don't know who the people are that are buying these cards. And it's almost one of the reasons why I think that the hobby is in a sort of a weird place where I think it, there's some stuff that's really good, some stuff that's really bad. There, I mean, there's people out here buying $200 uh, Mercedes autographs of a player who is getting his, he is playing and you know he's starting for a team that I really like the White Sox I think is actually one of the more interesting teams in the league for the most part they have a ton of young players and they brought up almost a new rookie every single year that's like a top rookie like they had Eli or 2017 obviously they made the trade for uh they traded Chris Sale for Michael Kopech and then Yohan Makata and then Yohan Makata comes up 2017 he gets his rookie card 2018 um, I don't remember if there was a rookie in 2018 that they have, but then 2019 they have Eloy Jimenez, and then 2020 they obviously had Luis Robert, and then they also brought up like Tim Anderson came through the system. Uh, 20, I think if you go back to 2014, they had uh, uh, Jose Abreu who won the MVP last year. He came up through that system, and then they signed a bunch of free agents that I really liked as well. Like, um, and I just think the team itself overall is very interesting. So. Oh, and then they also have uh, Andrew Vaughn, who I don't know where he's going to be playing because he's a first baseman, but like they signed a free agent, so but he could play outfield potentially. So I don't know exactly what's going to happen with Andrew Vaughn, but he's another young player that is probably going to be making his debut uh, hopefully this year. I don't know for sure if that's going to happen, but either way. So this card goes from like I said, $10 to $200, which is something that we've seen in the past. You know, when, when Trevor Story came up and people went crazy over his cards, Artidius Acuno, and I'm hoping I pronounced that name right, I think it was 2019 when he made his crazy debut. He hit all those home runs. His cards totally exploded. And I put out a post on Instagram saying, buyer beware, because remember what happened to Trevor Story? Now, Trevor Story has become a player that has sort of panned out. He's one of the better shortstops in the league. So, you know, his pricing back then would sort of make sense now. But I, I wouldn't say... The problem with Trevor Story is he sort of has like the Nolan Arenado effect where like he's one of the better players in the league. And maybe it's actually not the Nolan Arenado effect. Maybe it's more of the the Colorado Rockies effect where Colorado Rocky prospects and players, their cards for whatever reason don't sell very well. Uh, you know, and it could even it could be because people think that they're 
overrated because they're playing in Colorado, and I think they play in like uh, the, the my, my, I don't think it's the Mile High Stadium. I think that's for the football team, but they play in kind of that same location, so the air is really thin. So I guess it's easy to hit home runs. I've never hit a home run uh, in little when I was playing in little league, so I don't know how hard it is to hit a home run in the first place. Uh, and that's baseball is such a wild sport because it I feel like it's so hard to hit a ball. Like I don't I don't know whatever, but but either way, so Trevor's story, you know, he has sort of panned out, but his cards really aren't taking off the way that maybe some other top shortstops in the league potentially are. But Acuna, he made his debut or he made his debut 2019. He was part of that weird uh, late 2019 or late yeah, late 2019 rookie class that ended up getting cards in 2020 with um Bo, uh, with Bo Bichette and with Jordan Alvarez, both of them, and then Acuna also all made their debuts in 2019, but didn't get cards until Top Series One 2020. So, you know, I think we will probably continue to see this. I mean, it's, it's the same thing; it happens every single time. And you can go to other sports. You can go to Taylor Horton Tucker. You can go to Bull Bull. I mean, the hobby does this all the time. They just overreact to overreact to everything. And I like. I, I, I do wonder who these people are that are buying these cards because there are so many examples of this of, of this type of card not being worth it in the long term, especially once this and it's, and, and the other thing is like once this player starts getting more cards, so I'm assuming they'll probably be in series two. If they had an autograph in series one, I think that means that they potentially may have cards coming out in the. Uh, releases between Series 1 and Series 2. I don't know if that's a confirmed fact or not, but he did have the rookie card logo on his Tops Now card because sometimes, or what happened with like, Bo, and actually, yeah, what happened with Bo Bichette and Jordan Alvarez, and then it happened last year with some of the rookies that made their debuts. Instead of the rookie card logo on their Tops Now cards, they had a logo that was called the Call Up logo, and I actually think that it's an interesting card to look into. Like, I think. Uh, I bought, I think, four or five of Boba Shett's first call-up card uh, because I think it's just an interesting card that may be underrated now because people don't see it with the rookie card logo, but when they look into what uh, Boba Shett's official first kind of MLB cards were, that was one of the first ones. So I think that is an interesting card to look into. I also did that with Joey Bart, and I think I did that with Joe Adele as well. Those are some of the prospects that I... I do kind of like, and I, I would be buying some of their cheaper cards. I'm not going out and buying, like, first Bowman autographs of these players because it might, for me, it's just out of my price range, so it's not like a realistic purchase. Uh, but for Mercedes, it's very interesting because he, right now, he only has three cards because he got a second Tops Now card uh, commemorating, I think, the the record that he broke because I think he went, I think it was either four for four or five for five in the first game. I think it was five for five because that's why they gave him the card. But then in the next game, he hit in his next three at bats to go eight for eight to start the season, which is, you know, it's super impressive, but it's, it's just something where, you know, obviously it's not, you need, you need to see more and it. And it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make much sense to me because he's not like a top prospect. It's not like he, like if, um, if Luis Robert had done something like this, like to start the season last year in his rookie debut, I mean, I think, I don't know what would have happened. If this is, see, it's always interesting because it's always the players that have these cards that are super cheap that end up just skyrocketing and going to like a $200 card, which granted, you know, with eBay's return policy, and I'm not telling anyone to do this. I, I hate that eBay allows this to happen. But I'm thinking there's probably going to be a decent amount of returns on these cards because they're just not going to hold as much value as potentially people think that they are. And it is unfortunate, like I said, that eBay allows people to do that because with sports cards, it's it's kind of like a stock. I mean, obviously, there's so much there's so much that's di different between the two entities. But with you can't return a stock. Like if you go to Robinhood or you go through your brokerage, you can't buy a stock and then you know, 30 days later, which, which is, I think is the new, cause they changed it. eBay. It was 90 days and now it's 30 days. Uh, and then like between then and third, the 30 days, you can just return the stock. You can't do that. And I think eBay should be able to figure out a way to, you know, they should be more strict when that happens. Like in my opinion, I think that the, there should be something on your account that says you returned an item you know, if you do it four, five, six times, like that, people people should be allowed to know that. 
Like, it, if you do it one time, I think that's it's okay. Like, you know, if you get a card and it's not either if it's either scratched, well, not even if it's scratched, but if it's if it's not the card that was that you were told that it was going to be, I think it's okay to do a return in that case because you're you bought something that wasn't what the person what wasn't what the seller said it was going to be. So I think that's okay. But like, if you're buying a card and then within 30 days if it doesn't go up, you just return it. Like that's super shady and not cool at all. And I think you should definitely not do that because I think I don't know. I just I just I don't like that eBay allows people to do that. But with his cards, I think that there's a chance that that could happen a, a little bit with because of like they went from $10 to $200. It just it's it's the same with Taylor Horton Tucker. Like I think in all that Taylor Horton Tucker, he didn't have a Prism card. He just had a Mosaic card. So which is funny because I was in a break. Uh, I do Bailey Joe cards break sometimes, and I was in a Mosaic break, and I got a. J a Jalen Horton Tucker silver mosaic, which was like super wild. And at the time, I think it, it went from like a $5 card to like an 80 or $90 card uh, because that's what happens sometimes in the hobby. Like it just, they just overreact. So I guess to, to wrap this up, I think just be careful when you're buying cards of players like that. Don't assume that because it went from two, if it went from 10 to $200 that it's going to go from $200 to $300 because it's probably not the case. Like I would say if you're not, I would even say if you're going to sell the card, don't sell it for 200. Like try and sell it for 100 because you're you really are playing with fool's gold at that point and I don't think you'll have a better shot at someone potentially not returning it if the card then drops down or if the card becomes a $100 card. Like I would say just take the $90 and take away the risk because it's just it doesn't make sense for me for those cards to go up the way that they did and I would assume that that means they're probably going to go down pretty crazy, you know, if he doesn't go if he doesn't bat a, a thousand for the year which obviously he's not going to and he actually hasn't already so uh i mean we'll see we'll see what happens with this card but it's definitely kind of a crazy thing that happens within sports cards and something that you should definitely be careful of if you're looking to buy his cards or if you're looking to sell them because you have them